If there is anything I've been waiting for for the last 15 years, it was another Jeepers Creepers movie, that's for sure. Jeepers Creepers is my favorite series by a convicted pedophile, but I should really separate the work from the man. Actually, you know what? I don't think I will. Anyway, Stupid Cowabunga Creepers 3 is a highly necessary midquel, taking place after the events of the first movie, but before a bunch of dummies sat around on a bus waiting to die. So the story of this movie is just pretty much, oh, by the way, this happened too. Usually, if you're gonna have a midquel, it means there's some interesting character work that could be done in between stories, or an interesting lead into a story you already know, which would enhance it upon rewatching. This does neither of these things. The thing that is really expanded upon in this movie is the Jeepers Creepers mobile, as it's kind of the main star of this film. But, of course, Jeepers Creepers truck didn't appear at all in the second movie. And yes, I know his name is technically The Creeper. I don't really care. I like calling the doofy looking thing Jeepers Creepers. Our 1.5 story begins with one of Jeepers Creepers throwing stars because lest you forget that this thing's a ninja. Our Midsummer Night's Fever dream here is a prequel to our midquel, setting up that Jeepers Creepers really likes to fly off with people. That's new. Also, it kind of sets up the tone for the movie. Which is pretty much... nothing. Oh, lovers on the moon. Yeah. Creep zones then gives the doofy uplooker a hand. And that's a plot point. Kinda. The hand that fell here was the Jeepsters, so maybe the guy it grabbed took a bite out of the creep zones? That guy's a maniac! Why'd he bite me? Every 23rd year, for 23 days, it gets to eat. And when it drinks, it loves all 23 flavors and Dr. Pepper. I know I've done that joke before, but hey, if this movie's gonna repeat stuff, so can I, right? <laughs> I probably shouldn't have. Returning from the first movie, for some reason, is Brandon Smith playing Sergeant Davis Tubbs. You are not making one goddamn bit of sense. I wouldn't blame you if you didn't realize that this was a returning character, because I sure didn't until I looked back at some footage, and this is supposed to be on the same night. I don't believe it. Believe it. Also, Jeepers Creepers is the same guy. The police open up the star of the third movie, which is now left like in the middle of town, despite the police station it was actually left at in one clearly not being that close to other buildings like this. It's got a bunch of bodies in the back of the truck, because I guess Jeepers Creepers doesn't dump them into the sewers then line the ceiling with them anymore. We learn Jeep Creep is into pranks as of this movie and has a bunch of booby traps in his truck, with magically close closing doors and a spear that shoots out of the exhaust pipe. GET OVER HERE! You'd think you'd still need the exhaust pipe to work as an exhaust pipe, but whatever. Oh my god. Oh my god. His name was Derry Jenner. His sister's a train wreck. She's inside. Yeah, she's right in there. She's not coming out, though, because she's aged 15 years, unlike me. And we've only got her for a cameo at the end. Stan Shaw plays the sheriff, who I guess was on break during the first movie, and he's the closest thing to a character to like in this movie. But no one is really given enough to make anything feel all that meaningful. And the way the movie presents these events doesn't help. Everything comes off pretty ho-hum. 
The sheriff knows about the stupid creeper as well and comes off a bit like a lower key Crichton Duke from Jason Goes to Hell. You keep wishing that the sheriff character was kind of pushed to that more amusing level like Crichton Duke, but he never quite gets there. So apparently sometime in between flying off with Justin Long and eating his peepers, Jeepers Peepers remembers he forgot his truck like an idiot and has to interrupt his meal. Wait, is that really it? The truck is driving itself? Uh-oh, I think Jeepers Creepers has had his vehicle's computer hacked. Creepio decides to attack after the truck is safe, because that's the most important thing. And this doofus has 20 seconds to headshot the stupid thing, but doesn't. I mean, after all, he finger-wagged her. Finger wagging is the ultimate shutdown. That's why Sonic gets away with everything. I've looked that ugly thing eye to eye. I know it, and it knows me. Oh wait, do I? Oh well, this is embarrassing, man. I I've totally forgotten you. Can, can can we just start over? Hi, I'm Jeepers Creepers. Some people like to call me the Creeper, though others like to call the director writer of the film that. It looks like a crow made a forest sandwich. It's coming back, just like I said. How do you know it's coming? Because I'm a part of it, and it's a part of me. So yeah, Meg Foster has a talk with her dead son that the creep zone got 23 years ago. Apparently you can just have full conversations with dead people that it got now. I guess Justin Long just didn't want to be more helpful to the stupid bus idiots in the second movie. Davis, hey! You the best goddamn sharpshooter in all Poho County or any other county. We gotta give your character more importance since you came back. Meg Foster's granddaughter Addison is a character in this movie. I wish I had more to say about her, but she really doesn't do much. She goes over to her friend's place where we learn that her friend's brother likes to catch rabbits and non-kill traps, but apparently wants to leave them in there to starve to death. Just let it go. You're all a bunch of women. Wow, what a monster. I'm really gonna be sad when he dies. It's a wild animal, idiot. It's kill or be killed. Yeah, gotta watch out for them rabbits, man. <laughs> Dick Brother and his gang of douche bros starring Discount Matthew Lillard dirt bike over to where Jeepers Creepers is hiding his truck. Which is just some random field. Guess he lost the crow factory. Jeepers Creepers. He said it. Wasn't that the song the guy sang or something? Not in this movie he doesn't. This thing is made up of so many different parts. It's like a freaking... Frankenstein truck. Oh, that's why the truck is so strong in this movie. But he should have said it's Frankenstein's monster truck. Kiss my ass, you ugly old bitch. <laughs> oh no, the truck is its shields up. Yeah, it'd be a real shame if the spike trap got this unlikable jackass. <laughs> Nice delayed motion sensors, Jeepers Creepers, you idiot. Come here! Yay. Then we learn the owner of the feed store's son likes Addison. Riveting next. Make your point, Dad. You can do better. Man, Radar became a dick leader in life. The douche bros are not able to figure out how to pull the spear out of Dick Brother's leg. They don't even try to brace his leg or yank it out. They just hold him by the shoulders. Then the truck slowly starts reeling him in. And instead of, you know, letting that yank it out by holding him still, they walk him over to it. Truly the dumb leading the dumb here. At this point, I'm pretty sure this movie should have had the subtitle, Keep on Truckin'. Whoa, hey guys. Jeepers Creepers doesn't want to let his truck get all the glory, so in a very telegraph sequence, he lines up a double kill with his spear. Sykes! You understand what I'm saying, don't you? You think out of here would ever be interested in, say, a guy like me? You can do better! <laughs> in the city... My mother and I had a cat.
That cat betrayed us, gave up our location to Jeepers Creepers. Apparently she didn't think I was giving her fancy feast enough. Luckily, I know my horse would never do that to me. Yeah? Jeepers Creepers? Yeah, they're in the barn. When I get nervous, I start talking too much. Thank you for the hay, but please just go. Copy that. I mean, I gotta get the rest of this stuff up to Bernardi's. You ever been up there? It's really something. Uh, yeah, it, it's really something. Whoa, hey guys. <gasps> Meg Foster starts digging up the hand her son apparently buried here after it landed on his face and then he died of stupidity. Ghost son warns that the creep zone will want his old hand so he can give birth to it or something. But if this hand is like an eventual Jeepers Creepers magnet, why didn't Ghost son come by and tell his mother to move it away from the house after he got eaten by Jeepers Creepers and got all the knowledge dumped into his head? It's great that Jeepers Creepers 3 really seems to be trying to get apathy out of its audience. A lot of this movie just has old creepers hanging out on a rather bright sunny day. There are some night scenes, but predominantly you just see them in the middle of the day with a bright blue sky and very green grass. This juxtaposition doesn't feel really purposeful or anything, it just reminds you that this creature looks better in the dark, especially as that's what it seems to be camouflaged for. When you see it doofing around with its truck and stuff in the daylight, it just seems rather silly. I do like the colors in this movie, and I'm glad it doesn't have one of those ugly green or blue tints, but there should have been some atmosphere generated by the surroundings, or they could have at least played with the fact that the creeper is destroying what should seem like a safe environment. Well, at least that fun fur hanging off the back of his head is looking real good. Oh, one of the douche bros from earlier drove away and is about to make it to the road when he very stupidly goes into super slow motion, letting Jeepers Creepers easily catch him. Though, this was some ridiculous airtime this guy had here, so I think he was probably gonna wipe out and kill himself anyway. Hey, give me five! Well, instead they start holding hands. Either that or Mag Foster's trying to arm wrestle with a thing that doesn't even have an arm. But then she talks to the hand! No, really, she does. As of this movie, Chopped Up Jeepers parts can download creature info into your head, which is a convenient way to instantly know things about the stupid thing without being eaten by it. But as part of Jeepers Creepers is, it loses body parts and eats those parts off its victims to regrow them. Having people psychically learn about it must be a constant problem. We get some classic Jeepers Creepers sky continuity going on in this movie as it seems the sun is setting in these two scenes, but then a bit later as Son of the Feed and Addison are pulling up to this plantation house, it's the middle of the day again. Minus four out of ten. Hey, I just decided to smash my face into your window before I died. In retrospect, I don't know why I thought that would help. Where are those transmissions you intercepted? What have you done with those plans? Get out! Do you smell what the creep is cooking? Does sniffing through the top of his nose help him smell better or something? After doofing around the window for entirely too long, Creepio does the Sindel scream attack and grabs Addison for a little takeout. It didn't just fly off with the guy it already had because... Addison is special? You know, just like Justin Long was the one it was looking for. Except now it's going after a bunch of people the next day, so I guess he wasn't that special. Why? What? Did other people help Feed Son flip the truck back over so he could drive around in a daze? Huh. Radio. What's going on with that radio? 
You know, this is what I always thought was missing from this series. Shots of Jeepers Creepers casually driving his truck around and messing with his radio. Two of the bodies in the back of the Creeper Mobile wake up, which turn out to be Addison and Dick Brother. Glad he's still alive. He thinks I'm dead too, and probably you. Why aren't we? I think it's too big of a hurry to care if we are or not. Oh yeah, that checks out. That's why we've seen Jeepers Creepers dinking around in so many scenes doing nothing. Because he's in such a hurry. Say a little prayer that one of these doors opens. <laughs> so Dick Bro is still alive so that he could do nothing, but the truck could get him. Guess the truck just wanted a higher body count. How often has that trap ever even been useful for creep zones? Someone has to be in a very specific position to get them with that. You're gonna go over there and hold hands with it, aren't you? Just like she did. What if we could learn that thing's secrets just by touching that piece of its old flesh? Well, it'd be kind of silly, but if you're gonna introduce that, I hope at least you do something good with it. Spoilers, they don't do anything good with it. The hand was being bad, so Mag Foster put a pot on it. It's kind of like Evil Dead 2, the crappy version. Then the sheriff talks to the hand, which is totally just a repeat of the scene we saw with Mag Foster. Hey, I had time to kill this guy, just not Dick Bro and Addison. It's ancient. Oh yeah, that's uh, really interesting. So we didn't get any actually useful info then? Take his time out! <laughs> Nope, nothing useful, otherwise we might have known it had bulletproof tires. The entire truck is apparently bulletproof and is armed with magic-seeking bombs because this is now Jeepers Cheat Codes and Creepers got God Mode on. But while Jeepers Creepers didn't reflect shoot the sheriff, he is gonna shoot the shit out of the deputy with his minigun ricochets. Hold on! So did Creepers just raid a Goodwill for his clothing? Seriously, why is so much of this movie set in the day? Sergeant Tubbs distracts Jeepers cheaters while the sheriff goes for the minigun, but he calls him over before actually seeing if he can move it to shoot at him at all. Oops. Ah, oh, thanks. The gun is stuck in an upward position, so this makes it a lot easier to shoot you. Anyway, after a bullet time that goes on forever and some really horrible edge lines around their coats and the wings, we learn that bullets don't affect Jeepers Cheaters at all anymore, and he's got a magic return to a max. Glad the sheriff got the creature scoop from the hand, though. That really helped. So there goes the only character that had at least a little bit going for him, but I'm more annoyed by the fact that we're just making Jeepers Creepers pretty much invincible now. They could at least damage him in the other two movies, and then he would come back after eating some rhesus human pieces and then regenerating, but we're not even bothering with that anymore. Anyway, I guess Jeepers Creepers forgot about Sergeant Tubbs over there because he's so busy. So, I guess this leaves Mag Foster as the one with the insider info to stop Jeepers Creepers this time. Nope, she never even runs into Jeepers Creepers once. It's a bunch of setup that goes nowhere with her. Jeep to the Creep then remembers that if he doesn't do anything to someone, they won't be dead. And you'd think maybe there'd be some reason why it hasn't killed Addison yet, like she's special for some reason. Or maybe her brother's ghost is somehow stopping it, but that would require some actual payoff. So no, the creature's just been a giant idiot and tries to kill her now. <laughs> Darn, if only he knew his trap was there. At least this makes Jeepers Creepers look as stupid as he truly is. <laughs> Creep to the Jeep then has a hard time lining up his spearing, which causes him to only somehow take Addison's jacket off of her? I think that shot is more impressive than if he had just speared through her. The movie just kind of peters off to a finish here as a truck hits Jeepers Creepers, letting Addison get away. Though that does go with the one theme in this movie, trucks! 
Jeepers Creepers gets knocked down, but he gets up again and finds a note saying, We know what you did last summer, which means... Nothing, obviously, but this does play into Jeepers Creepers 2 where Meg Foster... Oh wait, no, she wasn't in that one, was she? But she totally told Ray Wise about it, and that's why he was able to shoot it with his pole launcher. Pretend, okay? Eddie, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Eddie? So, Feeders really did nothing in the end. I thought he's gonna have to pull himself together to make the final save or something, but just showing up to give Addison a lift at the end is cool too, I guess. And oh boy, am I ever invested in these two, what with their disappearing for large chunks of the movie and barely factoring into anything. But here's the real twist! Feeders is getting on the doomed bus from the second movie! That's why you totally see that guy in that movie. Seamless. Even if you want to pretend that this guy was there and died in GPO Creepio 2, he was going to some basketball game the day after the girl he just got together with was attacked by some supernatural creature. They weren't gonna last anyway. Also, if Peters was on the bus, it makes no sense he had nothing to say about the creature he just ran into the day before. And that's a look that says, I don't care if you ever come back, which is probably not too far off the mark, as apparently these two actors didn't really get along while filming this. It once again ran out of time at the rusty tip of a homemade harpoon. But most of you know this already. Mmm, yes, truly a tale as old as time, that Jeepers Creepers 2. I will destroy the thing that killed my brother. There's our Trish cameo. Don't know why she's waiting around for Jeepers Creepers to wake up, though. If she knows Ray Wise took it down with his harpoon, then she must know that he tacked it to the wall and made it into an attraction. She could've just went over to his barn and incinerated it while it was stuck there effectively dead for 23 years. But we wouldn't want to ruin the setup for Jeepers Creepers 4, Trisha's delayed revenge. You'd think Trish would have gone after it during this movie if she really wanted revenge or even to try and save her brother still. She's supposedly in the police station where just outside all the crazy truck stuff is going on. And she was in there until the next day with Miss Cleo, so she probably would have heard about Jeepers Creepers constantly reappearing. Hearing. But whatever, that was a good movie, an inconvenient creep. It was great how it set up a bunch of things that went nowhere and seemingly tried to set no mood whatsoever. Jeepers Creepers 4 if the Creeper can go Super Saiyan Blue and if the truck can turn into a spaceship. 